Welcome back everybody to Devlog 2 of my roguelike slash arena battler game. This time I would like to get some more progress on the prototype done by adding some engine features like maybe an entity system and collision detection. Maybe I can even get to generating some maps today. So let's get going. So I've just been working on a quick and dirty debug line renderer which is just rendering thin quads when I ask it. It's pretty much another instantiation of a simple renderer without texture rendering stuff. Now if I go ahead and run the program you can see that the sword has a debug collider around it. If I go into the meta program, comment out this debug mode call and uncomment this release mode call you'll see that there's no collider anymore. I've just disabled everything that pertains to debugging in the release mode. So my next plan of action would be to factor out some of the stuff from the player structure into a separate entity structure so that I can reuse it for new entities like an enemy or items, etc. So I just spent a while writing a very very bare bones entity system. So I pulled out the entity struct from the player struct and I adopted a little pattern here. You can see that there's this number called features of type entity capabilities which is actually an enum bit field. These capabilities can be many things. For example, can the entity burn? Does the entity get knocked back from attacks? Or even engine side stuff like does the entity have a custom update script or something? We can check whether or not an entity has a specific capability using a simple ampersand operation. And depending on that, certain blocks of code will run in the common entity update. For example, if I add the dot flammable feature to the player, the entity update will check whether the player is in a fire and set itself on fire if so. So to test this out, I added a very simple enemy spawning system. Um, enemies have a custom updater which make it so that they face the character at all times. Next up, what I would like to do is get a basic GJK implementation so that I can actually do some collision detection and attack these enemies. Alright, it's been a while since the last clip, and I've just gotten the collision detection working. I implemented the GJK algorithm, as I said, and um, I had a small typo in my implementation, so um, I was always getting collisions when there were none, but I fixed that and now everything is working. I can attack an enemy and I'll get a collided message in the console when an intersection occurs. I think I would like to generate a map next, which means that I'll have to represent a bidirectional graph, which should be quite interesting. I just realized that I never talked about my plans about the map. I think I'm gonna go with a dicey dungeons type graph based map, where I have edges and nodes. The nodes represent a room, and the edges represent paths between those rooms. 
Some nodes could also be special rooms like shops, blacksmiths, etc. So I've just gotten the map generation implemented and I would like to go ahead and talk about how the algorithm works because I had to come up with a satisfactory algorithm that generated nice looking map like graphs. So here's how the map gen algorithm works at the moment. I split the algorithm into two parts, node generation and edge generation. Let's take a look at node generation at first. I'm going to keep track of the parameters to the algorithm here in the top right. You start with a point in the center of the screen. Then you pick a normalized vector in a random direction and scale the vector by a factor d. This d is the minimum distance between any two nodes. Now we have the location of the next node. We repeat this a couple more times. Oh wait, you may notice that even though I want the minimum distance to be d, we still have some nodes too close together. So let's go back and fix this. Instead of simply going through and picking the next node in a random direction, let's make sure that the new node isn't too close to any other node. We do this by simply testing the next location against every already existing node to make sure that they are too close by. If after n checks, we find that we still couldn't place the point, we stop trying with the latest placed point and instead go to the one before. Now we generated a few nodes. It's time for edge generation. This step is dead simple. We loop through every point and for each point we check if any other node falls in the range d to d times e. If it does, connect the nodes with an edge. Let's do that for all the other nodes. And there we go, we generated a map. So what does changing these parameters even do? Well, increasing the D parameter increases the minimum distance between nodes, which makes the maps more sparse. Increasing the N parameter increases the number of times we try getting a random direction for a certain point. What this means is increasing the N parameter tends to make the maps more and more linear. Increasing the E parameter makes the maps more interconnected since it changes the maximum distance to which nodes can form an edge. And that's pretty much it. Of course, I admit, instead of inventing an algorithm, I could have easily gone online and googled a way to generate random maps, but that kind of defeats the purpose of why I'm doing this game development in the first place. I enjoy solving problems, so that's what I'm going to keep doing. And that's going to be it for this time. Next vlog may take quite a while to make because I have my exams coming up and I should study for those. But I hope that I will get some substantial progress next time as well. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.